Well, you know, it's time to go, 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 go. Or something like that. As soon as music start playing, please. And, and the game board load. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It takes a while to start. I will refrain from using the the sound box, even though I really wanted to play the Balenciaga music. When you yeah. said I'm waiting for the music to load. Yeah. Please. Ah, oh, yes. Please don't refrain. <laughs> I would very much like if you did. So, hello everyone, it's time to get cringy again. <clears throat> Yay. With Pathfinder. Uh, I'm very bad at bookkeeping, but I think this is our 15th episode. No, never mind, this is our f 14th episode. There you go, that's how bad I'm bo at bookkeeping I am. Lucky 14. Is that a thing? I don't think so. Yeah, it's, it's twice seven. as lucky as 7, yeah. Right. Oh. Sad. 49 is where it's at, though. The whole 7 multiplication table is a is a streak of lucky numbers. Sure. All Especially right. in the casino. Well then, I'll keep that in mind. In any case, hello everyone and welcome back to Gundrear Worm Flight, episode 14 tonight, today. Depending on your time zone, things will be happening. But, first... A quick throwback to what happened last time around. Many things happened, namely exams in which uh, all of you passed with, well, not particularly flying colors, but you passed, and that's good enough. But my colors—they're falling. No, wait, that's that's what the Pathfinder gnomes have to deal with. Never mind. Almost all of your colleagues have failed their exams, so they've been held back. And they'll need to do a catch-up exam on the 15th, like always. Uh, however, you're g after a little bit of rambling, you found out that there was a little fund going on to pay for Claire's readmission exam. You all contributed somewhat to it. Then she passed and um, got back into the academy, but... She did pay half her monthly tuition just to get the readmission exam going on. And then when you found out that y your other failed colleague, Ola Wong, did not have anyone make uh, scrounge up money to make a, a fund for him, uh, you took that endeavor upon yourselves to re-enlist Ola Wong and have him reattempt the uh, admission exam. He also passed, so hooray. His back inside. <clears throat> then you decided to explore a little bit. By explore a little bit, I mean finish your research. At some at which point you met with Chateau Brennislav once again, the professor, the conversant from the Arcane Halls of Linia, who told you a little bit more about how the Arcane Halls of Linia work and do their whole uh, education system over there where you're not required to pay monthly fees but they do more or less aspire on you to a degree he tried to assuage you that only really well intentioned and trusted people get to have that do the spying yeah have the responsibility of spying on you but Still, someone is going to be looking into everything you say, do, and think. Which, clearly, could cause discomfort to a lot of people, but considering that all the things that they're going to teach you, some people might consider that a very, 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 very little price to pay. Then, Chateau Brennislav also told you some other things because he revealed some secrets to him. Namely, that you have invented a UV, uh, some UV lenses of sorts. Speaking of which, I've added that to your inventory, Nicknack. I see that, yes. And with which you are able to see, perceive, the Titan essence in two people with the UV light. On the other hand, however, you can't see anything else while you have the goggles on because 
the excessive UV lights just make everything white. However, at night, and when on the outside, where there, where there is leftover UV light, you can see uh, in the dark, which is great. Uh, he also told you a little bit more about uh, some other secrets, namely that he, well, you told him that Professor Yorgonaut and the Elder Watcher are dragons in disguise, sort of. And he revealed that he is also an envoy of yet another dragon, one by the name of the Blizzard of the West, sent here to the Kingdom of Sulfak to investigate and uncover other dragons and report back to him. But also apparently has some other task going on, one of which he has, has asked you to complete on his endeavor. Namely, going to the city of Stahl and bringing someone back. But also, he told you that you are playing in the Dragons game. And what we view being students in an academy and working directly underneath Professor Yurgonod, you should reconsider and review your uh, contract that you signed up when you joined the academy. Which... Promptly, you did. But he was very silly about it. Uh, we're not playing Dragon's Game, we're playing um, the other one. Yeah, you're playing the, the Paizo one. Off game. Yep. Um, upon reviewing your contract, you learn that you are magically bound by the contract to be wardens and to not, under any circumstance, harm Professor Yurgonod or any of these school faculty. Quick question. Could we hire somebody to kill them? Would that make a problem with the contract? For uh, no. The contract does not uh, say that you, can, that you can't hire someone to kill him for you, but then again... You have to go through the effort of finding an assassin and hiring them. Excellent. An assassin that can kill dragons. Yep. Uh, you are 100% fully allowed to do that. If you are able to scrunch up the funds. Because also, as part of what you have been told, insofar as the academy goes, um, well, being a dragon... Professor Yurgonad is bleeding you dry of money. But to solve that little issue, you decided to take the worm for another flight uh, towards the city of Stahl to complete your little endeavor for Professor for Conversant Chateau Brennislav, but also to deliver some crates and cargo. Uh, and also you negotiated with... Um, uh, uh the yeah, Mr. Sternhell. I forgot his first name. I think it's Arthur. Might be wrong. I thought I thought his first name was Mister. No. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> With um, Mr. Sternhell, you talk to him and convince him to pay you more, and I believe you critically succeed on that. So he's going to pay you five times what he was paying you before, which is quite the sum of money. Yes, that was young. Afterwards, you... Might be able to afford tuition afterwards. Yeah. Crazy. Um, afterwards, you hopped into the ship, along with Melding Jadre, the elf who, pilot who has been <laughs> murdered by an owlbear before, and along with him, you have been traveling... Uh, eastward and then northwards, trying to find the ley lines as you travel towards the city of Stahl. Over the course of your travels, you have found some more ley lines, have found some places of power that you have yet to investigate, but also you have found two towers along the way that you also, ideally, should investigate, but... We're going to uh, attack Saruman, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> the ship 
ran out of fuel um, at some point after you crossed the last place of power you found, and then you had to land it ne next near the city of Stall. Then, as the ship landed, <coughs> the pilot melding Jadre decided to go take a nap while you uh, well took the time to recharge your ship. That's why you had the required energy to finish the trip. So, um, yeah. It's charging time. All of you have rested, so you can go ahead and do a rest to recover all of your yep. spell slots, hit points, and whatnot, and restore your hero points to chew. God. I did that last time. I think I actually spent a hero point last session, so I also did that last time. Well, all right then. So with all all of that out of the way, you have well, it's uh, super early in the morning, and you're still several many miles away from Stahl, about a whole day away from walking. But you can't quite walk and carry all of those crates that you're carrying, so you need to charge the ship with uh, sufficient fuel to make the trip there. So, I take it you guys are going to do the charging ritual thingy. Yep. Alright. I am, I am a battery. A, I am putting a second level spell into this. Alright. Who's assisting with that? Me, but a first level slot. Anyone else? I'd say knickknack, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does say crafting check. If you have spell slots to provide as part of your crafting check. Yeah, nah. Uh, <laughs> I think knickknack will study the engine or the core during this process. I think a Magusic could help. Yeah, I'm waiting. Probably, but Wait. he's, he's Eep. Yeah, he needs his morning coffee. I hope he has an Eep. Regis, beast, you here? Beast thou? Art mm. thou awake? Mm. Oh. Nani. Nani? The fuck? <laughs> if you're here and awake, I would like to know, are you uh, also partaking in the charging ritual for the ship? Uh, I have a problem with that. And that being, I'm not able to load in Foundry for some reason. Uh, are you downloading Baldur's Gate? No. Okay. Bad attempt. I mean, I was having that problem earlier, so... There you go. I see you cycling through. Well, worst case scenario, I can roll that for you. Do it. We need the fuel. We just got our slots back. Alright. Don't use my stuff without my permission. Excuse you, my lads. We're gonna sit around not being able to get the cargo back, you know? Sure. I'll be moody today. I chose chaos. <laughs> no. <clears throat> it made me. So, Wildak, you get to make yes, your... Sorry. Your... Religion check. Yeah, spellcasting check. Religion, that is. <clears throat> Lex also gets to use your spellcasting check, which I believe is occultism. Is it? Uh, it can be sure. a cultism. One more! I'm going to use my halfling luck. Use guidance on yourself for an hour. Quickly. <laughs> Thank you. 
I can use whatever I want from the primary check, right? Uh, oh, you're doing no. the secondary check. Yeah, but... you're doing the secondary check. Ah. But yeah, you can oh, roll. Better. You can roll any whichever one of those. You can roll Arcana, Nature, Cultism, or the other one. I forget. That just made it. Uh, yeah, you did. As a matter of fact. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Uh -huh. I think that for the first time you get a critical success on this check. Oh wait, no, you, you don't actually. You roll a 25. Critical success would be a 26. So no. Oh, no! But you do charge the ship. So, yep. Vise, which level spell slot are you providing for this? Charge. Alright. So, yeah, the ship does charge 17 points of uh, Cosmium, which is quite a lot, but still not enough to get the ship going. If you want to get to stall, you need at least 50. Oh my god, 50! Fifty it's impossible to fly anywhere. Fifty because you're flying uh, outside of ley lines. Ah. Uh, yep. All right. Well, let's do it again. Yeah, please roll me your checks, everyone, again. Oh, my slots. I need to go to bed after this one. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll manually remove a slot. Just type in one, right, instead of two. All right, that's a luck. Uh, yeah, I think so for you. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. What was the first level again? Go! Okay, I don't make it. I think I need to reroll mine too. I got a four. Uh, well, uh, as your secondary checks can only assist the primary check. If the primary uh. check fails, then your assistance doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. You have, you have hero points. Uh, so, will Dak, you will use your hero point on that, right? I will use my hero point on it. Oh, I mean, you already did, didn't you? No, I used luck on it. Didn't you use luck previously? Yeah, I used my halfling luck. It, just, it even shows that you have reroll on your rolls. So yeah, but I mean... halfling luck is only once per day, isn't it? Uh, let me make sure. No, it's infinite, oh, well, I, apparently. I, I, no, no, it's not. I have... Don't call him out like that. Uh, yes, never mind. I used hero point. Okay, you used your hero point and that failed. Yes. So you can reroll, right? Yeah. So no, I can't reroll. You spend your spell slots, everyone, but the ship, the ship is not charged. Yep. Oh. Alas. Sorry, guys. I really need to make this thing better. Yes, please. Yes. All right. Can I do a second level charge loading, whatever, fast fast loading as the as the same? Well, you all have to make the check again, but now you can off, you can offer your second level spell slots if you want. Yep, but I have hero points to spend, so you know. All right. Well, I mean, it still depends on Wildax roll. Wow, oh, okay. that works. Yeah, that Can I not work. lead, I guess? Or does he have to do it? I'm not sure. Uh, Wildak is the one who has to succeed. Well, whoever is leading the the recharge has to do it. Yeah, I meant, let, let, let me do it. Let me do oh. Why are we letting a person who has a higher DC check do it with this? I mean, everyone has the same DC, really. Whoever whoever yeah. chooses to do to do to be the primary caster gets the same DC regardless. Um, <clears throat> it's that's first level in ritual. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah, if yeah. I do it. Yeah, the level doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Let me see. Primary. Yeah, just you need to be able to cast a spell of that level. Got it. Got it. Um, in order to participate the ritual. Yeah, I. 
with whatever you or Vice roll, you can't screw up the check because will deck rolls high enough. So what level spell are you providing for this? I only have a second level spell slot left. Vice? What? What level spell are you providing for this? Second, I'm out of spell slots. What you think? Yes, I'll use a hero really point. Good. Okay. Well, it's a good thing you have the power to get your spell slots back. Shash. So, yes. Actually, you don't need to use your hero point on this, Vice. So, like... He wants to. But I wish... I, was, I just explained, you don't need to. But I don't wanna... Okay, I'll get it back and we'll pretend it's a Denda. Well, like I said, you and Lex are secondary casters, you're only providing support. But Wildak rolled an 18, even if you rolled poorly, you would provide a minus 2 to the check, but a minus 2 to the 18 is still 16, which is still a success. So, like I said, no matter what you roll, uh, you will still charge the ship. Which, yes. by the way, you do. You charge it up, and it has 38 Cosmium. Now, it still needs more charge. Yup. Yes. But I believe Lex and Vice are out of spell slots now. And so it's just Let me use my feature for the second spell slot. What was the DC? Uh, 5 uh, was uh, the spell slot level. So, 7. 7. I roll uh, 20. 20. I use my power of titans. Oh, it look it's eight. Yeah, you recharge your spell slot. You have a second level spell slot. So uh, uh, you can uh, help Wildak with that check again. I mean, I can help him, or I can do it after him, and potentially we can charge more. Uh, not really, no. You will Why? Have... You will charge the same amount. You're just doing one check instead of two checks. It's up to you, really. Well, no, what I mean, he's going to do it now. And then I'll do it on my own as a lead. And if it exceed two times in a row, are we going to charge more? Uh, only if both of you critically succeed. Right. Okay, I'll help. Okay. Otherwise, it just then charges by the amount of spell points that you... Bump in plus. See, this is where you should in. wait until this point. Uh, you have a hero point. I do have a hero point. Yeah. Well, Eighteen. All right. The fourteen. The fourteen as part of the secondary check is not going to affect anything right. because it's a regular success, and the eighteen is more than sixteen, so you pass. Uh, Lex is not providing any help this time around, so that's six plus. Moral support, okay. I understand. I can give him a pep talk. Let me roll on something. You all, <laughs> you recharge fourteen more points. Of all cosmium. right. Are we above fifty now? Uh, yes, I have fifty-two exactly. All right. Let's hope nothing bad happens on our trip. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I Except we get attacked, and look, we cannot use spells! You are devoid of spell slots, mostly, yeah. It's fine, it's not like we're going to a place that's filled with entirely werewolves. Well, uh, what, it's the 4th of Gaffeter? Mm-hmm. So, we've still got a ways before the full moon, so let's yes, just Yes, we go have ahead. an entire week. Let's just go ahead and charge the rest of the spell slots out. So I'll just continue here. We'll tap out, and then we'll rest. You're going to spend the whole day just out there in the middle of the wild? Yep, charging, charging the ship. Okay. Fair enough. So, Wildak, I think it's only you now. You get to make a shitload of checks. I'm putting a level one spell into it this time. Mm-hmm. So you can just give me the religion checks. Um, I'm doing 
12. That is and I have nothing. I have no re-rolls on that one. So not, that's a nothing. Oh, no. Round two. With a first level spell. Can I start flying this thing to our destination? <laughs> Do you want to? I don't see why we shouldn't go there if we have enough fuel and there's no efficient way to fly this thing. The only issue is do we expect combat? Uh, um, yep. What level spell was I, that again? Would that? that was a first level spell. All right. I feel like we're more likely to encounter combat in the middle of nowhere than we are in the middle of town. Yeah, so, I can yeah, agree. You start flying, and I'm going to continue charging, and I'm going to add one more into it. All right. So one more spell slot. That was, that was the spell slot that I used. Mm -hmm. I clicked the wrong button. Hot dog. Nice. Almost a crit. Almost a crit, but... No cigar. That's also a first level, right? It was first level. Okay. So there's all the spell slots because I really don't want to spend the last two heals that I've got. Well, five heals really, but we'll we'll gloss over that. Sure. So um it at least got to get outside of the town if something bad happens. What actually ha ends up happening, though, is that you charge a ship enough that it can get to its destination, uh, but you don't need to pilot it yourself, uh, Nick Knack. You have spent so many hours charging this ship that um, no less than six hours, that at this point, Melding is already... Uh, fully well, I I was gonna do it like three hours in, but sure. Right. Uh, because once there was enough charge, which was three checks in, yep. Uh, I would have probably started flying it. Um. Though before then, I was sort of uh observing in a very scientific fashion, as I do the the core, uh, as they were charging it, uh, to see if I could get any insights into how to make the process better. How to charge the ship better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either more efficiently or more shorter, lower DC-ishly. Alright, give me a DC-25 crafting check. See if you can get some Inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brought me, baby, one more time. Um, and Waldak was too busy to guidance me because I was staring at things. Yeah. Uh, so it's a straight roll. And that's a hero point. Thanks. Today in Pathfinder, we burn all of our hero points in the first. <laughs> in the first 13 no 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 I've got another 29 hero points going uh, says so on my character sheet here no they don't stockpile mark. between sessions no no it says here current HP mm. oh wow I'll just put my HP down to 29 no uh, <laughs> at this current junction in time Nick Nick you are quite unable to figure out the proper way of well, that, namely um, charging the ship a little bit better. Although you do get some little bit of insight into it. Uh, the ship's arcane reservoir, whatever it's called, I forget. The arcane alternator. It is fashioned with uh, that Cosmore that I have found before. And the way that it, the material itself feels familiar, you feel like you have seen that plenty elsewhere. 
but also not in the same shape. And you try to rack your brain, think, trying to think, where have I seen that before? And then... Like from floating up at the ceiling. And then it kind of strikes you that it is incredibly something that you were not expecting it to be at, but at this point you have spent enough time investigating those that you would recognize this. The shape and the usage is ridiculously different, but the pyres at the towers seems to be made of the same material. Okay, so the pyres are being powered by the ley lines. The... Mm. What's it called? Bra bra brazier? Brazier? The brazier. <laughs> brazier. The brazier um, inside the towers that I found. They seem to be made also of the same material, also of Cosmore. How exactly it's uh, being used with the, with the towers, you're not entirely sure. Or... Seeing how the towers are very, 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 very old, you imagine that maybe in the in the distant past, people did not know the proper utilization of Cosmore. <coughs> okay, so I guess I will give a, another look at those when we light one up again. I guess. But it do, um, you do know for a fact that um, Cosmore can hold magical energy within it in different ways and is able to enchant the whole uh, structure to which it is attached to which is what it is doing to the uh, to the flying ship so imagine that the braziers are magical in many ways in that they are enchanting the whole tower but interesting That is an observation you make, but as of yet, that does not help you in any way to figure out a way to charge the ship any faster. No. But gives you a lead into something to investigate in the future. Yeah, the other thing I was going to investigate, which I can't do now, because I do not have the resources, was some way to just make it so that we can sit in the place of power and charge the ship there. Without having to expend mm -hmm. points. That is another interesting idea, yeah. Form charging station for your electric vehicle, yes. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, having things along the way would work really well because, you know, uh, more of these ships will be out at some point. Great, if true. Nonetheless. We'll just station wizards at all these towers, and my god. You have the infinite charging station of your dreams. Nonetheless, as you are uh, taking off the ship and flying the rest of the way towards the city of Stahl, um, the elf pilot, Meldon, he comes back onto the deck, sees that you're all starting to take off with the ship, and he uh, immediately kind of goes towards the controls and asks you to let him pilot the the ship the rest of the voyage. You say I was hired to do a job and I can't let you take my job from me, mister. Otherwise if word of this makes it back to the to the academy they might end up docking some of my pay and I can't have that looming over my head if you are ever so understanding of my current situation. I mean they already know that I can pilot the thing. Oh, yes, but the problem isn't whether or not you can pilot or but whether or not I'm the one who's piloting, because if I'm not piloting, then they have no reason to pay me, you see. Well, I was mostly trying to let you have your sleep while we get on the way, because, good lord, sitting around with, watching these people dance for several hours is a bit tiring. What, well, then okay. you do it then. Charge the ship yourself. Go on. I'll watch. Well, don't you worry none about that, mister. Me and my elvish constitution 
Don't need more than some four hours of sleep to get the full charged. Don't elves famously have a constitution penalty? I don't know what you're talking about, mister, but if that is a joke about me being mauled by an owlbear, I find that very distasteful. <laughs> okay, you get three more I got killed by an owlbear before it becomes awkward, okay? <laughs> <laughs> But then again, we are, I suppose we are nearing our destination, and I feel like I was kind of remiss not to ask this before, but what in the earth are we doing in this middle-of-nowhere city again? Uh, well, one, we are transporting goods, which uh, gets people paid, hooray. Uh, and two, we're also picking someone up. Oh, a friend of and yours. A friend well, of, a, of friend. a friend. Yeah, a friend yeah. of a friend. Yeah. Uh, and also, I guess we're scouting the ley line network. Right. And we found two towers along the way. Oh, yeah, I do. Do you remember that happening last night? Yeah. I do suppose that Professor Pitacles is really keen on you finding all of those ley lines and well that quartermaster lady she was also very keen on you all finding those ley lines around and about the more ley lines we find the better the ship will fly because then we can plot our course by using those yeah that is very just, yeah that is I'm just kind of worried about the titans at those ones that we passed near. Oh, don't you worry none about that. We are flying so very high up in the sky, they might as well think we're just a flying bird. Off into the distance, completely unreachable. Unless, of course, they have but, javelins or a bow and arrow or some nonsense like that. Which I don't think they do. Um, like well... All the way in the opposite direction, uh, the titans were wyverns, so I'm not sure being in the air helps. Yeah. Well, in that case, I, was, I suppose that's why you're here, to protect the ship and me, of course. Uh -huh. Isn't that so? Yup. I think the well. ship takes but I, I mean, what? But who's this friend of yours you're here to see and pick up? I don't know anyone who knows anyone these this way here in the middle of nowhere. Um, Let me just go through Doug's comic to find out the characters' names again. <laughs> Available on his website. I think he was called now. Duncan, right? Duncan, yes. If we're after oh, to Duncan. Duncan to bring a guy from sex. Now my name's correct. Duncan, Duncan will have someone, and we will bring him back. Yes, yes, that's that's it. I believe that someone is a donut vendor of some sort. A what? Okay, Duncan's donuts. donuts. I see. Uh, so you're saying this to 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 Melvin. It's yep. a bit sketchy. Okay. Not a direct friend, it's more of a... Well, as I said, a friend yeah. of a friend. We've never yeah. met them. Um, hmm. We're doing a favor, basically. We're multitasking, hooray! Duncan, you say? Hmm. That's not a particularly common name here in Solfak. I wonder if this person is a foreigner. Then again... Could I don't know. If you know something, it would be helpful. Well, I... Well, I don't know what I know or what I don't know, but um, I don't know any Duncans. But I've traveled a lot, and um, that name does not sound like... Does not sound like a Sofakia name. Got it. I imagine that whoever this person is, they're not from around here. So we have talked to minorities, Scott. Well, I... 
I don't actually know. In any case, do you need help with with that as well? I suppose if we're gonna be staying in town for a while to wait wait up for this ship to load, then I'm, I could do some some helping with your seeking and searching and finding and whatnot. If you feel like you could help, sure. I imagine it wouldn't be that hard to find a Duncan if it, the name is as unusual as you say. Just bring him along, why not? Could be fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. Oh, sure. Might be a bit boring staying on the ship while it gets recharged. Well, less so boring, but more so... I'm not necessarily going to stay in the ship, I do need to go into town and talk to the representative, the mayor. Uh, to let them know of our mission here as envoys of the academy to, well, make sure that we have safe passage in the upcoming, well, however long. But also to enlist their services in recharging the ship. Yeah, we definitely need that, because the ship is pretty much on empty. Precisely. If we want to fly this thing back, still today, tomorrow in the earliest, we definitely need their help to chart this... <coughs> this whole ship up. In any case, and you're in charge of charging the ship. Nice. Well, pretty much. In charging. Out. I'm actually not in charge of charging the ship, but rather finding the people capacitated to do that sort of job. Let me have some puns too, Doug. Come on. I can do no such thing, mister. Damn it. In any case, then, yeah. While I walk around, talk to people, I'll try and find this, um, this Duncan friend of yours, if I can be of any help. That sounds like a great uh, plan uh, while we look and uh, get all of the uh, uh, product on board unloaded and sent out to various places and check in. Uh, then we can start. Well, very well then. Let's do just that. <coughs> and indeed. Oh, the... Hope you like levels. <laughs> Well, wear everything, really. Wear everything. Oh, no. The ship lands very close to the to the city of Stahl, and you can see that it's not particularly a very large town, kind of smaller than Sack, whereabouts of the same size. It's big enough to have several uh, establishments going on. Uh, <clears throat> but the city is not walled at all. Unlike most other cities here, especially those in the middle of nowhere, there there's no walls around the city. Uh, but also there's no particularly favorable place for the ship to park at, I guess, would be the term. Uh, there is a river, but this ship not necessarily being seaworthy, or even, you know, tested in waters, it does end up landing in the fields outside of Sak to the or rather stall and once it parks there immediately all of you get the whole um, the whole endeavor of throwing rope ladders out and then going down to the lower deck to um, kind of enable some kind of landing gear of sorts that so the ship doesn't tilt to one side or the other you do the whole process to make sure that the ship lands and stays stable in the ground and level, if at all possible. And once you this all... is going to leave crop circles, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was about to make an alien visit a joke, but okay. It will definitely leave a mark on the terrain. But then again, this is new technology, not the only city really that has a airship or rather flying ship port uh, prepared is the academy not even merging itself as one of those just the academy in any case melding 
lands the ship very neatly in the in the field. Once you get the parking brake enabled and the landing gears uh, <clears throat> also anchoring the ship to the ground, all of you disembark. And melding and you, I imagine all of you, start walking towards the entrance of the city through the road. And you can see that there there's a couple of guards um, kind of in between you and the entrance of the city, just uh, a ways ahead of the road. And they seem keen to interpose you as you are arriving. Melvin, he kind of pulls a, pi uh, a piece of parchment from his clothes and kind of nods to you all. Well, I think I'll, I'll be the one handling this because, you know, I'm the envoy for the academy. I'll, all right. I'll try and handle this. And once you all approach the guards, immediately they halt you. You see that the, they are a hybrid of a half human, half elf, half 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 orc or something, and the other half is a lycanthrop, but not fully werewolf or what have you. They still have some human-ish traits about them. It looks like they're kind of in a hybrid form of sorts. And the guards hailing you at the gates is a, a werewolf and a were-tiger. And they stop you. And the werewolf starts saying, Who goes there? Who are you all? And what kind of contraption is that? At which point Melding immediately interjects, well, you see, masters, there's no need for worry. We are invoiced from the Academy at Mergen, Novarkan. I don't know if you heard the name, but we're invoiced from that place. And here, I'm um, here on a diplomatic mission, and also I need to speak with your mayor, if at all possible. And he hands a document oh. to the to the werewolf guy, who picks it up, unfurls it, kind of quickly glances and reads over the whole thing. Then looks at the rest of you all, and then back at the document, then back at Meldin, then back at the document, curls, up, curls it up again and holds it in his hand and says, Well, alright, you can come in. The rest of you stay out here. And Meldin says, um, But they're with me, sir. They're also in voice of the Academy, you see? And the werewolf says, well, this here document says an envoy, not many envoys. So, you come in, the rest stay here until we have this whole matter settled. Good luck, boy, what a question. And then Mounting. Yes, we can wait. Thanks for a while, That's says. Nice. Um, well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go see what all of this fuss is about and then I'll, uh, I'll send someone for you, if you don't mind waiting for a little bit. Okay. It's not like we have much of a choice. Alright then, I'll be right back, I hope. And then... The... The werewolf guy leads him... Leads Meldin into the city. Uh, <clears throat> towering over him, even though Meldin is a very tall elf. Uh, the werewolf guy is even taller. And the were tiger just stays there, kind of holding a lance and guarding the, the main entrance through the through the main road. And all of you guys are just there, waiting until something happens. And I would like everyone to go ahead and give me a secret perception check. Why don't you? Secret perception. Everyone, See yeah. if he's hot, right? <laughs> If what? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> I see you speaking words there, <laughs> mister. <laughs> Alright. Um, Nick, Nack, and Lex, the two of you are kind of, like it or not, somewhat distracted. 
Nicknack, you're pondering and wondering, looking at the ship, then looking at these people, looking at this town, and it doesn't seem all that technological, advanced or uh, able to help you with the ship in any way, shape, or form. And you're kind of pondering and wondering, how in the world are these people going to help recharge the ship? And you are kind of lost in thought thinking about that. Lex, on the other hand, you're distracted thinking about all the various type of people in the city because even though you see Melding and the werewolf guy walking away, you kind of lean over a little bit and you can see there are more uh, lycanthrope people out and about. And you see there there's all kinds of people there. There's half humans, half elves, half half orcs, half dwarves. The whole array of races, but also all kinds of animals. There's werewolves, where tigers, where bears, where boars, where many other things. And you just kind of ponder and wonder for a moment just how many types of lycanthrope creatures currently live in Stall. Not to mention the population number of the city itself. And also just how much of a ruckus must this place be when the full moon comes. On the other hand, both Vice and Wildak, the two of you have your heads more thinking about the security of the city itself, and you realize that this city has no walls. You could, if you wanted to, easily enter through any other place in the city. You're not restricted to entering through the main road. There are many farms and plantations around and about through which you could decide to enter if worse comes to worse and you're not granted uh, permission to enter the city. But then again, so could anyone else. Not only bandits and thieves and misintentioned people, but also wild animals. But then you remember that every single inhabitant of the city appears to be a lycanthrope in some capacity, so only a foolish, a, a very foolish person would attempt to break into the lycanthrope city. And that might explain why there is no walls in this city. So, is there anything you guys are going to be doing, or just wait for Melding to return? Yeah, I think we're going to wait for just a little while. I mean, you know, if it if it becomes looking like that he's not going to come back, and, you know, the day is going to progress, then maybe sneak around and see if we can get in some other way to find Duncan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't take long for him to do the official business, so if he's not back soon, we'll just... Yes, what I said. Exactly what I said. Uh, I said sorry, sorry. Exactly. So... You talk so much. You wait and wait and wait and wait some more, and it feels like you have been... <laughs> Waiting for an hour. The oh no. The sun is very slowly going down in the horizon, and there's a still sunlight, but you haven't been waiting for far too long for a be right back kind of situation. So I, I like look around at people and I say, uh, you know, maybe we should go back to the ship for a while, and I wait. I mean, is there anyone, anyone else even here? I think we are still near the Tiger Guard, right? Well, yeah, the, the, the Tiger Guard has gone back to the... Oh, ah, okay, okay. To, 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 the, uh, to the main road. I mean, he, he he's a fair enough distance from you guys that he can kind of see you, but he's not so close that he can pay attention to what you're saying or what you're doing exactly. I have a bad feeling that our pirate is going to end up another victim of another were creature. Something oh, yeah. tells me. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but, uh, you know, we need to get, we need to get Duncan fast. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Um... What are the odds that these aren't guards and he's just been kidnapped? That's a chance. I think it's best to just pretend we're going back to the ship and maybe even tell the guard if the pilot comes back that we wait back at the ship, so, you know, and then we go sneak off in, in, in reality. Sounds like a plan. Well, are there people even watching us that were put there? Well, the guard, there's yeah. one of the guards. Yeah, just the... I'll just ask that we are waiting for far too long. How long they're going to be back? Before an hour to be done. I think we waited there for an hour or something. Yes. Are you asking the, the, the guard that, Vice? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. My bad. So you go to the guard and ask that, and he looks around and thinks to himself for a while, and then he turns back to you, well, um, that is indeed taking a long while. Ring should be back by now, but if he's not back, well, I can't really relieve my post, so I'll have to stay here, and until I receive word that you're allowed in, I'm afraid I can't let you in. I'm really sorry, but... Can you just yell loudly for another guard to hear you and maybe he can do that? Um, let me see. And then he tries to look around for someone he might recognize. Until eventually he does see someone and he signals them. <coughs> it takes a while and another were creature comes over. And then he... Uh talks with them in whispers you can't quite hear all that well but he do catch something along the lines of Wuldering went to see the mayor he's not back yet where Woogie goes check on him and the other um, where creature guard kind of nods looks at all four of you his eyes linger on you four for a moment and then he goes off that's good Right? It seems, unless we get stuck out here just waiting again. So you wait. Again. Again. I still think we should go back to the ship! Winky eye! I agree, Wink. You wait for a little while longer. Just because Vice seems somewhat insistent on... Uh, on the fact that you guys really should wait. Fine. And then the other guy comes back in the other where creature guard and says, "Well, um, you're good to come in, but I I need to have a talk with you." And right. the where tiger guy kind of looks at him, the other guard, and looks back at you, and then, um, well, I suppose you're free to come in. Then. And, All right. And steps aside, and then him and the other uh, were creature guy they start whispering away from you about what's going on. But mm -hmm. that aside, it seems like whatever holdup was going on has been cleared, and you are allowed into the city. That was easy. Uh, easy. I I would like to see if I can like look at them and figure out. Is something up? Secret perception uh, check. Secret perception check. Again. Are only you rolling? Uh, I suppose Nicknack is moderately concerned as well. Yeah, I'm a bit I iffy. Heard. Heard. All right, so. 
<laughs> all of you try to linger back and listen, but it's very hard to make it like you're walking into town, but also hanging back for far too long. It's uh, very suspicious. Uh, however, Wildak is able to do that with quite a lot of grace. He is uh, even, in fact, able to keep a polite distance as, as if to not to... Uh, not to attract attention, as if he's waiting for them to be done whispering it so he can go and ask something. And he does that masterfully, and, you know, you... It's, it's the part of being a tax collector, you have to stalk people. But you you perk up your, your, your big halfling ears to try and listen up to what they're saying. And... You hear one of the other were-creature guide is... Um, the other guard is a were boar, and he seems to be whispering to the were tiger that, well, I talked to the mayor and he told Waldrin to, well, come back in and let the other these guys in and help the other one, the envoy. Uh, apparently, he was looking for some. Well, he was looking for Duncan, and you know what that means. But. Well, they should have been back. If they're vanished, then... Maybe something has happened. And we need to be alert. Also, keep an eye out on these newcomers. They might have something to do with that. If you find the, the envoy, let everyone else know. And the were tiger nods profusely to all of this information that's coming in and once the whole whispering is over he turns to you Wildak and says can I help you with something? Oh nothing really I was just wondering where the bar is I, I, I hear there's some good uh, drinks around here he squints and looks at you but then points over into the distance. That you know us halflings, we like our liquor. Oh, then you should look for the long house. It's that big building over there. And he points oh, over. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I suppose that off you go then. To the bar, yes. <laughs> I take people with me and stuff, and I'm like, ah, oh, there might be something that's going on here. Uh, guys, uh, they, they, they're like after the envoy, and uh, because he asked about Duncan, and there's something going on. I heard them talking. I didn't assume that the pilot would use the word dunking specifically, but hmm, maybe that was a bad idea. Probably should have handled this more discreetly, I guess, from the way we were told to yeah. go about this. Well, I don't think that uh, 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 Branislav said anything that he was like on the run or not to tell anyone or anything. I got the feeling we're supposed to do this subtly, but okay. I might now, it's too late for that. Yeah, we need to find the elf and get everybody back on the ship and go. Yes. Go Any idea where, where, where he might be? Ship. Well, let's get a drink and then we'll unload the ship and then we'll just like wander around and look for him. Sounds good. What do you think? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get a drink. Then we're going to unload the ship. Then we're going to look around for the elf. And did Branislav describe Duncan? I don't remember, but I think he I... did. I don't actually. I don't, I don't remember if you asked even. Well, we said like, how would we find him? And uh, they said uh, he said. Oh, he's a uh, he's a big bull guy, right? So yeah, look for anyone who's a little bit horny. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Wait a second. 
that's not right. <laughs> there it is. So that is what we're going to do, Doug. All right. Yeah. Or new watch. <laughs> you go to the longhouse, and in the longhouse, you kind of settle down for a little while, and your presence here does catch a lot of eyes. Um, but people don't seem at all perturbed by you, in the least. Um, you think that people of Stall are used to travelers and non lycanthropes stopping by, and they're probably not far too worried about you since it's not a full moon week, but oh well. Do we see one of the guards from the gatehouse or anything like trying to keep watch on us or anything? Uh, not particularly, no. Okay. All the way you walk into the longhouse, uh, they did not see, they did seem to be keeping an eye on you, but also very casually. They were not uh, following you closely or staring at you too intently. Got it. All right, we should unload the ship, and then as we unload the ship and take stuff around, let's look and see if we see our wayward adventurer. All right, so are you are going to just unload the ship without knowing where and how? Yeah, I was about to ask. We don't know where to put that stuff, right? Uh, I thought that that would would be part of like the shipping. Uh, I mean, we have. Well, the we person sort of have done a thing before. Yeah, I mean, the person who went to look into that is Melden the Elf himself. Yeah. So it would be prudent for you to either ask the innkeeper or the mayor some okay. details about that. But sure. Well, let's let's ask the innkeeper. Uh, you know. Do, do we have, like, one of the shipping invoices so we can ask who to find th this person right here? Where would they be? Uh, sure, yeah. Sure, you do have a, a spare shipping invoice to keep on you for some reason. And um, the innkeeper at the, at the tavern... <coughs> Sorry. Is a... Um, a wear horse. That's an interesting one. Yeah. He approaches. Nay. <laughs> Nay. He approaches you. Uh, once you also approach him, and he looks at you, kind of with a, with a nod. Hmm. Your faces. How can I help you? Uh, we're looking for this person right here, and I point to the name on the invoice. We've got some packages for him. Or her. Uh, they just lost delivery, boys. You look at the... Well, he looks at the invoice, the shipping invoice. Oh my lord, something crazy is going on with the neighbors. Nonetheless, uh, he looks at the names in the shipping invoice and says, uh, Alright. This here is the mayor. This here is my tavern. This is a... Uh, shop from across the street yeah sure uh, I suppose I'll receive all of the shipment over here and then we'll sort it out ourselves um, I suppose you have a means of unloading the ship the the cargo I don't know that you have a ship we do have a ship it's it's parked right outside well all right then um, you do have a means of bringing the cargo all the way over here, right? We have uh, had. Not really. We've we've done this before, but it seems that we must have had like loaders or something that were doing it for us. Well, all right, then I'll provide some some helping hands for that matter. Thank you. And then he okay. fetches some helpers who. Uh, will help unload the ship. And then, for the next hour-ish, 
some other rare creatures go along with you to the ship to unload crates, boxes, and then they use all of their lycanthropic strength to carry and or drag, push, whatever, all of those crates back inside. At which oh, nifty. Point, at which point you're also paid for your oh, all the nonsense that you're carrying. Money, money, money. So that's what? From the Academy to Mer to Stow is one billion dollars. Mm. Which Push translates to lip. approximately two copper pieces. Uh one fifty miles times five divided by ten divided by ten again. So one of you or split um split this amongst yourselves, but you do get um hold on these many silver pieces for 172 gold and a half but there that is go. the correct amount, right yeah that is the correct number 1700 right, silver pieces all right it's odd that the lycanthropes are paying us in silver <laughs> oh yeah i mean i don't want to throw gold well, at you they wouldn't have that it's not like they're going to cut themselves with it. True. Okay, so that's... Uh, I don't know what a quarter of a silver piece is. 25 copper? No, two copper. Two and a half uh, copper. Two and a half copper. Well, hence why I said you divide that amongst yourselves. How much silver is one gold? It's 10 to 10 to 10. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, shall we just divide uh, 431 and I'll just take the extra silver? Alright. Sure. 431. So everybody gets how much? 431 silver. Four and forty-one. Got it. Four three one. Four yep. three one. Got it. So each one of you gets a uh, four hundred and thirty-one silver, <coughs> or forty-three gold and one silver. And after that, you are Gucci, back at the tavern. Uh, an hour later, the the tavern keep is happy that the shipment has been brought in. All of the specialties from Mergen have been shipped. Uh, whatever it is, all of those uh, Stern Hell products have made their way over here. Everyone's happy. Uh, you good. have been paid. So we have. And I'd like to ask him. I was like, hey, uh, you didn't see, like... An elven fellow come by here recently, did you? Or, uh, like, he may have passed by earlier today. Today? Well, I have seen some elves passing by throughout the week, but not today, no. Not any. We've kind of lost him. Uh, he was here at the, the start, and he was going to go and speak to the mayor, I believe. Um... Can you point out where his house is so we can go there? Or sure. where he would be? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, right from across the street, uh, if you go that way, just a couple houses down, you find the town hall and also the mayor's house. You should probably right. find him there. Mayor Krant. Mayor Krant. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Of course. And thank you for the shipment. It'll it'll certainly help us. I I turn to the group and ask, so nobody else hears. Should we ask him if he knows anything about Duncan, or is that a bit risky move? Well, that's what I was wondering myself. You know, uh, should we should we ask him? Maybe. I mean, he might know. I know the guards reacted kind of sus about it, so might be an issue with that person. It might be an issue, and I mean, you know, maybe maybe if you guys go outside, I'll ask him, and that way if 
something happens, I'll run out. Uh, how full is the tavern looking? Uh, like, not too full. Uh, what, what's the pitch for Gracio here? What's <laughs> the pitch for Gracio? Uh, it's not too pitch for key. There's hmm. like some six or eight patrons, give or take. I know. It's all torches. Oh no. Is that a torch kind of him? Mm. Let, let, me, let me ask him. I, I'll, I'll kind of broach the subject. I, I say, oh, oh, excuse me one more time. I, I have no, no, no. to ask you. Let me do my diplomacy thing. Okay, there we go. So My friend here has a question. So yes. Ludak Lud yes. and Lex, the two of you are together asking this then? Yes, yes. Yes. All right. Should we go for diplomacy or should we go for... Yeah, I think diplomacy is probably best in this case. I mean, what exactly are you asking? Ah, you know, I'm trying to establish since we did the delivery and then just... Um, we heard the guards talking about some weird incident involving some name. I think it was Duncan. They were a bit felt off. You know anything about this? You know, like, just we just overhear the gods. We don't care about it's just pure interest kind of vibe. Oh, well. Duncan, th that's just something, someone that uh, you're probably better off avoiding. You don't need to worry too much about that. What did, what did the guards say exactly? Well, uh, actually, I forgot. Did they say anything? You, uh, they just basically indicated that he was a near do well. Yes. No, oh, I think literally all they said is, "You know what that means." Yes. Well, actually, what the guard said is that Meldin, the elf, was looking for Duncan. Right. And you know and what, know that, what means. that means. Ah, uh, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what did the? But we don't what, know what that means. What did it so I use so I use my good logic here. So where is this Duncan character at so we can stay clear of him? Because we wouldn't want to run into his shady business or whatever. That's whatever. right. Because oh. we're respectable businessmen. Oh, don't you worry. Duncan keeps to himself in his house in a well, uh somewhat isolated part of town. If you as long as you keep to the main roads, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Also, it's not like we have that much business outside of the main road anyways. Unless you're here. Mm -hmm. Just see someone specific. Got it, got it. Well, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Stay safe. Avoid the main road, got it. I guess we head outside and uh, first to the mayor's house. Don't expect him to be there, but we have to check in any case. Yeah, I think we should look in maybe the windows first. I, I, I have a feeling that he's been, like, detained. Ritually look, sacrificed, yeah. Look into the mayor's house windows first. Yeah, you know, kind of, you know, look around from the outside, see if you see anybody inside, you know, All ritual right. sacrifice going on. Mm. You are, you start walking towards the direction that you have been pointed at, and you see the town hall. You see that there are, uh, there are slights <coughs> going on, so you sneak closely as um, as properly as you can without looking too suspicious, to look through the windows and you see just, you know, some people on the inside, some lycanthropes, of course, on the inside, uh, apparently just talking, solving business, someone sat at a desk, just perusing through the documents and signing off papers, it seems like a regular office moment time thing, place thing. But we don't see the elf anywhere at all. No. Alright. I... I don't assume he's still in the, unless he's in the cell of being, you know, tortured and stuff. He probably maybe he got drunk somewhere. What? 
I, I didn't hear it. Happens. I said maybe he got drunk, so what? Ah, I, I, I don't, don't think know. he got drunk. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Okay. Over the course of an hour seems a bit unlikely. Um, well, it's also entirely possible. When was the last you... time you got drunk? It is very likely to get drunk in one hour. I mean, it's in been probably day, like while three hours. Things. We, we did the unloading as well, so it's not just one hour. And we walked down. Also true. Um, I mean, it's also entirely possible that he did, in fact, get directed to Duncan and uh, he's stuck there. Mm, and nothing not. terrible has happened. Well, if nothing terrible happens, we can just walk into the mayor's office and ask where our friend is, and, and if it's fine, it's fine, you know? If not, we at be. least we know it's not. Should we head inside and ask officially, or, or not? Well, we're not going to get anywhere unless we do. All right. That's cool. Let's crack this case wide open. Oh, Lord. All right, you, all four of you, I'm assuming, walk inside of the town hall and ask to speak with the mayor. I'd like to speak to the manager, yeah. Well, no, I mean, basically, I, I, I would like to ask, where is the envoy? You know, we finished up. Yeah, but are you just asking that to whoever, or the, the mayor specifically will that? Well, let's ask directions well, to just, the mayor. Just yeah, people that are around. Maybe, maybe some of them will be able to a answer first. The mayor is right. probably a very busy person. Could be. So, you get into the town hall. There's a bunch of people there. Uh, some, some of them look like they're mostly just organizing some paperwork, getting some organization done here and then right at the back you see a very imposing werebear not even in a hybrid human form he's full on werebear and he looks at all four of you then he stands up and says ah finally I thought you were not coming in uh you were waiting for us? Well, yes. Um, Your friend, Meldon, he went to the gate to ask you to come in, didn't he? No. 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 We're looking for him, actually. Hmm. Well, that's odd. How long did he leave? Um, how, how, how long ago did he leave? Well, should have been some two hours ago. Yeah, we, we finished unloading everything, and we were kind of wondering where he was so we could leave. Well, I think we also have to organize the other things so we can leave, but sure. Yeah. Shh. Well, um, <laughs> he came in here, said that he, well, he said that he's an envoy from Novarkana, right? Mm -hmm. Right, he is. And then what happened? Well, then I told him, well, he talked about the whole uh, agreement with the, with charging your flying ship or something like that. Right. We have some mm -hmm. druids who might be able to help, and I told him about said druids, uh, pointed it out to them. Then he said uh, also that he was looking for someone named Duncan. And, well, I imagine it's our Duncan. So I asked him also to talk to the druids. They might, well, not only do see to the whole charging the airship thing, flying ship thing, but also point him out towards Duncan. And then he left. Oh, well, where's Duncan at? And maybe we can go over there and see if we can find him. And yeah, also where the druids at. <laughs> well, sure. Um, and then he goes on and um, tells you exactly where to find the druids and exactly right. where to find Duncan. It's a specific, very specific house in the village in a very 
specific place. You could not miss it. As for the Sorry. druids, it's um, kind of on the outskirts-ish of the town. There's like a, a very modest woods, some trees and whatnot. And that's where about the druids are, far away from the actual masonry constructions. Masonry, woodworking and whatnot. The druids are a little bit further in into the wilder side of this village, which is by default very wild already. Nonetheless, the the druids are at one side, Duncan's place is at, at another side, and uh, the mayor also says, Well, I'll go ahead and ask the guards then to keep an eye out for 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 Meldon. All right. That'd be nice. And then Can I ask, uh, <laughs> what's the deal with this Duncan guy? We heard the other guard whisper his name, and we even asked the, you know, um, innkeeper. So, w w what's up? Who is that? Well, who is she? I'm not particularly at the li liberty to say oh. anything about Duncan. I imagine that. You have been sent specifically to look for Duncan. Yes, but that is basically all the information we got, so... Oh, no, it is. Unfortunately, I can't really tell you much. Well, alright. Let's head into the described direction, then. All right. The mayor also leaves the office with you, and then he um, starts hailing some of the guards and passing the <clears throat> the word onwards that there is an elf, elven guest that is missing, and you keep an eye out for him. And here is expecting uh, you to say earlier. Uh, he points you to the direction of the druids on one side and Duncan's house on the other, and it's strewn along the middle is your elf. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, once you're back in the streets, the sun is starting to set in the horizon. You already see some of the some of the, some of the guards walking down the main road, uh, lighting up the lanterns uh, on the street. Mostly for the visitors, because lycanthropes, they can't see in the dark, so. They're trying to keep this place uh, hospitable for outsiders. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you're here, stood in front of the, uh, in the crossroads between the town hall and the longhouse. And what are you doing? Well, I think we should go to Duncan's place first. Yes. All right. Also, I'd like to summon Broadway. He has dark vision, just, you know. Sure. To save. Broadway shows up and tags along. Okay. Oh no, he's three elections behind us. And um, you follow the directions to go to Duncan's place, and you arrive at the very specific house in front of a well and when you get to the house well that's where you have been told that Duncan leaves at okay did the guards follow us or not uh, or are they just looking around town for for an elf friend uh no there's no guards following you around okay okay do we do we buy the story since we're yeah, just us, like just us. Meldon? Meldon, are you out there? Nobody replies to that. I'll knock at the door. Alright, you knock at the door, you hear some very loud noises coming from the inside. And then, uh... You do all notice... That even though the, the windows are kind of closed, and they do seem barred, as if someone has put furniture in front of the windows to stop them from, well, stop people from looking in. You do see a pair of eyes 
pair of blue eyes looking from behind from the holes in the furniture in one window and you do hear a very loud noise coming through the door and then the door opens ever so slightly and you see the very imposing figure of a bow man inside who looks at well whoever he can see through the little crack in the door and says hello i'm down here uh hi what My do you want down here. uh well uh a i wanted to know whether you saw an elf today uh he's about this tall and speaks with a country accent no i didn't see no elves and the second thing is Branislav sent us. Who? Branislav. I think it was Uncle Rags, something like that. Uncle Rags, yes, Uncle Rags. Sorry, I used his wrong name. I wrote down Uncle Rags sends his regards, but even though this wasn't the exact wording, but I just found it funny. Yeah, I think that would have us murdering someone. <laughs> yes. A pun. Oh, God! Pun. No, we're not going to be doing it if he does that to me. <laughs> I just want to spice it up, guys. <laughs> you, upon mentioning Uncle Rags has sent you, or, well, Uncle yes, Rags, Duncan seems to relax, and heavily he relaxes, and then he opens the door a little bit further to look at all of your ensemble and says, Oh, so you're, you're all friends with Ragamuffin. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a name he goes by, I presume. Uh, as, um, Catman. We know him as as Connoisseur Branislav. Do he, like muffins? He's a he's a a cat oh, tiger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the yep. disheveled hair, burnt hands, long robes. Burnt hands. Yeah. Yep, we're we're talking about the same person. <laughs> well, all right then. Quick, get in. And he opens the door okay. just enough for you all to get inside. So what the heck is going on here? I mean, it looks like you've barricaded this place uh, against something. Well, barricaded. <laughs> once, once all of you get inside, he closes the door and seems to lock it. And when you look around, you do see uh, this place is, well... Very bare bonesy, but it is big and spacious enough to fit Duncan with all of his size, the bull guy, and a very frowny, a uh, young-looking dragonborn. Ah, you must be the friend that he said you were going to bring along. You look at him; he's a uh, white dragonborn with the blue eyes that were watching from behind the furniture. He nods at you all and says. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, really. Oh, well, I'm Wildak. <laughs> that way, we're not strangers anymore. I'm not sure if that's how that works, but sure. Yeah. And he looks up at uh, Duncan, and Duncan just nods. These four say that they have been sent here by, by Uncle Rex. And the Dragonborn's eyes just beam up. He smiles. <gasps> You're friends with Uncle Rex? Is he doing all right? Can we go see him? Yeah, um, yeah, we've got a ship outside, but it isn't going anywhere fast. It's out of juice. We are supposed to bring you to him, yes. That is the plan, yes. And Duncan says, well, all right. Wait, you said you have a flying ship? We do, uh, but we're 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 missing our pilot, and he might have asked about your name in town. And then he supposedly what? went missing. So, yeah, mm. would it have been the druids? Oh, or the mayor? If I'm being fairly honest, I don't really trust much of anyone here other than the mayor, Ragamuffin sent me here with the young one. His name is Braun, by the way. Oh, hi, Braun. Hi, Braun. I'm Wildak. And he does not say, hi, everyone. And 
he keep keeps on well now the all the children in the are in the exposition shack he goes on the this little one here is very special um I don't know how much Ragamuffin told you. He is very secretive about things, and I'm afraid he didn't tell you much about what's nope. going on. Uh, no, he told us nothing except for you and a passenger, and that was it. Well, Braun here is uh, a white dragonborn. What some folk call no as blizzardlings and these people are they have a heritage that traces back to the blizzard of the west ah and he says that he works with him yes the blizzard of the west wants to find the blizzardlings and keep them safe because there are others out and about who would do them harm. Which is why I've been tasked with being well, his bodyguard and to protect him until until Ragamuffin found a a proper way of securing us both. And I imagine that you were the transport. Sounds like it. Yep. But I wonder where our elf is then. He either went here or to the druids, and I just picked here first. Well, I really don't know what's up with your elf friend. But if he's the pilot of your flying ship, then I do suppose we would need to find him if we're to leave. You mind? Place. Tagging along, helping us, you know, being a local and stuff. Well, I'm not sure if he comes as a local. local. Yeah, people don't like him here. It's mm, not no, a good no, idea. No. Well, people and don't the... really mind me, but I'm, I'm supposed to protect the young one, so I'm going to stay and here. That... Okay, okay. In a safe yeah, place no. where I know I can protect him, and well, you can go on then. Is there something we should know about the droids? As far as I know, they're just... Well, I don't know much, to be fair, but all that I do know is that they're... They do live in the outskirts of town. I think they're a little bit more... There's some disagreement with the way that this town should develop, if it should be more civilized or more in touch with its feral nature. I imagine you have figured out what is the whole gist of this place. Yeah, we knew that before we got here. Which is one of the reasons why Ragamuffin chose this place as our... well, our bunker, so to speak. Why? Isn't it dangerous during the full moon, so...? Well, during the full moon we can just hide inside and I carry plenty of silver to make sure that anyone thinks twice before messing with us. And Yeah, but the whole village of them against you. Well, they won't try to break down this house. There's plenty of protections here against lycanthropes. Besides, the lycanthropes is not even worried the about. It doesn't I, seem like... I don't, I don't think lycanthropes are naturally drawn to murder everyone specifically. Yeah. I know, moon. but it just sounds, you know, I have the thing here, that thing that can protect me from all the like from throws around. I mean, he somehow. managed so far, so, you know. I mean, they the didn't want moon. to kill him so far, it seems so. Nonetheless. He doesn't know <laughs> if it would work or not. They're well, not murderers, they're just having a wild girl's night out, you know. The real reason why we're here is because... The people who would see, well, who would want to capture blizzardlings are cultists, demons, and fiends. 
and even they will think twice before running into a town full of were creatures. True enough. The town itself is a big, safe protection against demons, fiends, and cultists. And, well, they don't mind us here. Despite some previous attacks have been attempted against this village, trying to get to us, but the brave men and women of this village have been ever so kind as to shelter and protect us. Got it. Well, I guess we need to go and look at the druids, guys. Yep. Yep. Let's hope these ones aren't necromancers, because that's really getting tiring. <laughs> All right. And, and I'm keeping an eye out in case somebody's trying to follow us around. Sure. Um. So, <clears throat> two things. First. You leave, and by the time you leave, the you have spent enough time talking with Duncan, and he's been kind of telling you the lay of the land here, the places in the village, where to go, where not to go, where the druids are, kind of like people's names, just so you're more acquainted with where and what you're getting yourselves into. <clears throat> but also, by the time you get out, <coughs> it's evening already. The sun has gone down. It's completely dark, except for the lanterns that are illuminating the place. There is a lantern illuminating here, this uh, Duncan's place. And, uh, well, they stay inside. Duncan does seem to be at the ready to attack whoever tries to make it their way inside or take away the blizzardling. And Braun, he just seems kind of excited. He... Seems very eager, he really pays attention to everything that you guys are saying, really focusing on everything that you're saying. He seems excited and eager to leave, and he starts uh, kind of arranging his little pack with his belongings. Because it would seem like the time to leave is fast approaching. Oh no, he's adorable. <laughs> so, adventure. so cute. And once you do go to the... You start making your way back to the to the main road to go to the druids. Once you do arrive at the main road, one of the guards, they notice you and hail you and say, oh, by the way, you were looking for your elf friend, right? Yeah, yeah. that's him. Uh, we found him. Okay. okay. He said that he wasn't, he was feeling unwell and returned to the ship. Okay. And, uh, well, I should go help him because I'm a I'm a healer. Well, all right then. I Bang. suppose the the ship is that one outside, right? That's it. I, yes. Yep. I don't think you have any other big flying ships around here. So yeah. Well, we do have smaller ships at the river. Yeah, but they don't fly. Well, no. Well, but yeah. He didn't but... say flying ship. He just said the ship. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I think he more wanted clarification, not so much, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for telling us. Bye. You're welcome. And then the guard goes back to his post of standing near one of the lanterns and looking around, making sure that, well, everything, the, 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 the village's peace is kept. Hmm. Sure, sure. And I imagine right. you guys are just going to make your way back to the ship. Yeah. To check on Melvin. Yeah, did, the elf did there. Duncan say he trusts the mayor or he doesn't trust? I didn't hear it. He, he did said trust he, the mayor. Yeah, the mayor yeah. is the only one, really. Okay, now I might. Which is probably also the why the mayor was the only one that didn't go about, oh, yes, that Duncan fellow. It's sus. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Then. Yeah. And I dropped my suspicions. Suspicious. Do you feel like entropy and titans are connected in some way? Uh, do I? Do I I'm, I'm wondering if our elf is now a lycanthrope. <laughs> I mean, both, both are uh, increased in strength, I guess. Well, I mean, an easy way to check would be to put the 
with the glasses Silver on. Silver coins but... that we got. Yeah. Yeah. I, why I, don't you do that? Maybe I was more something. talking about the other thing, but sure. Um, in any case, you guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, despite all of this all of this scaling drama that is going on, I would like to ask it if, if it is alright with you that we call it quits here, because boy, my throat is hurting now. <laughs> what with sure, 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 yeah. Not, not a problem. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. I wasn't expecting to <laughs> have so many deep-throated voice characters going on. <laughs> I'm sure Regis wouldn't uh, uh, mind a, an extra hour of sleep as well. No, I'm not going to play this here, then. It's going to destroy my schedule. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> in any case, yeah. uh, I don't want to half heart the rest of the narration because this part is important. But also, my throat is kind of busted. <laughs> and I don't sure. want to, I don't want to force it any further because, you know, I have big travel coming up tomorrow. Yeah, Dark yep. is not a throat code. <laughs> no. I told you before, Rugal, uh, what with the whole talk about getting bracers, my whole blowjob boy career is going to end. Twitch is still on, right? It is, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, better. But what, yeah. Are, what are they going to do? <laughs> Not yet, ah, another I'm social right, media. Just saying. Uh, well, in any case, I'm going to write down here that you guys are going to go to the ship then. So, yep. um, Check on the pilot. Melding Jadre, the elf pilot, who, well, is one of the two pilots you have that can pilot around the the worm. Yep. Yeah, it's like, we don't actually need him, but I'm just gonna say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How cruel. I mean, technically it's true, but I don't want to be like... Oh yeah, no, we don't need him. Uh, we can. We don't technically need him, so we could leave right now if we wanted. Because, uh, no, that would be a bit mean. I think we will have problems if we do that. Aren't you yeah, evil um, aligned, though? <laughs> there's I'm neutral. Yeah, he's neutral. I'm he's... evil. Also, I'm evil. I wish no ill will to him. I mean, my, oh, my logical... I God. want to... My logically mind, well, technically, uh, is wanting to kick in, but it's like, hmm, that elf yeah. has been through enough. I'm just going to be nice. Yes. Also, what are the symptoms for getting bit? Uh, so massive, <laughs> mark. massive tooth bite marks, yes. Mm, okay, let's look for that. At the, Profuse once bleeding. Once we reach the pilot. Next time. Profuse bleeding, huge bite mark. Um, Viral hikis. Making woof woof sounds. Yeah, yeah, making woof woof sounds. And also potentially um, frothing at the mouth. Shaking in my boots. Shaking yeah. and, uh, well, turning into a werewolf in the full moon. Or a oh. lycanthrope. Which is oh, just a week away, you can clearly wait. Uh, but oh, I wow. think one of the biggest signs that someone has um, contracted lycanthropy is if they fail a saving throw. Ah, oh. uh, true. Wow. Where did Rook go? Well, that saving throw, I guess. That's a big sign that we should end the game. So, yes. Thank you all yep. so very much for watching the people at the Twitches and whatnot. Um, Bitches. I don't know whether or not no. we'll be back next week because I'll be away. <gasps> but there is a possibility. I'll I'll, I'll I'll check my logistics, and there is a possibility that I can actually uh, stream next week. If not, no game next week. But then on the one after that, there will for sure be a game. In any case, thank you guys so very much for watching, sticking around. Have a wonderful rest of the week and the weekend. I'll see you later. Bye bye. 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 Oh, the Rugu is back. Yep. Yeah, you said the game is over, so I press uh, update.
Видео драйвер спадает, но диск он куда-то хандал, это краш. Да. 